And The Voice really is, I think we have seen, a divisive, divisive project. And the country is waking up to the cultural revolutionaries' attempts to take the whole country down their agenda. But The Voice is going down, as are the polls for Anthony Albanese. And joining us to discuss all this is great friend of this program, Liberal Senator Alex Antic from South Australia. Alex, thanks so much for joining us here on the program. I want to start with a little local story from you that an inner city Adelaide council has now decided they're going to stop running Australia Day. Now, Australia Day, when I first reported about it being something the voice might take up, they all said, oh, no, 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 it's a conspiracy theory. Nobody cares about that sort of thing. Alex, tell us about it. Well, James, thanks uh, for having me on. And, and your tinfoil hat clearly is uh, is itching your skull uh, to a point where you are now having these delusions of uh, of uh, <laughs> conspiracies that are coming. And of course, what you've actually done, what you've actually done, is just called it for what it is, and uh, uh, and called out this attack on Australia Day. It's exactly what it is. It all starts. Uh, seemingly at local government level. This is a, a neighbouring council to the one that I used to sit on for my, for my sins and for my future therapy bills, the Adelaide City Council. It's right next door <laughs> to that. And uh, it is a very, very inner city style council, very well-to-do area. And uh, these, are, the, these are the ways these things start. They start at local government level, mainly because, I think, this is my personal view, the left have a very easy run-up to local council. I was talking mm -hmm. to a bloke mm -hmm. yesterday, actually, who... Uh, who was talking about the fact that he was on council 10 years ago, but he had to keep running his business and he wanted to have a you know, contribution, but he just didn't have the time because he was doing actual stuff. Um, <laughs> this one, credit here, has to go to councillor Jack Gaffey, uh, who, from, from the city of Unley, who called this out, who voted against it and who did the right thing and who is a great example of getting sensible people. He's a dentist, he's a local guy, I know him uh, quite well, uh, and uh, he's called this out, he's raised the alarm. Um, and this is the message here. You know, conservatives, everyday Australians, the quiet Australians have got to get back into the political fight. I've been saying it for two and a half years, if not longer, um, because these things take root at local government level. And before you know it, you've got local councillors telling us whether or not we can have an Australia Day celebration on January 26. We'll, we'll, we'll get stuffed. We're having it. So that's the way it is. <laughs> Well, they really? have they have axed the community events without consultation. The ratepayers were not consulted, and earlier this year they uh, moved their citizenship ceremonies at Adelaide City Council. So the and as a migrant, it is an absolute honour to be naturalised on Australia Day to become an Australian on the day, on, on your on nation's uh, mm. national day, and they have removed that honour from their migrant population. Uh, <laughs> But, Alex, what can the ratepayers do? They're not being consulted here. And most, let's be honest here, most people have no idea who they're voting for in local government elections. I mean, they're only showing up to vote typically because they're going to get fined if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I mean, in, in South Australia, it's a non-compulsory vote. So once oh, again, it tends to nice. it tends to sort of conflate the uh, you know the left's vote in a sense because you get a sort of a 25% turnout at local government here, and so as a result, local government in 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 the, certainly in the inner city metropolitan areas is largely dominated by ALP staffers. Uh, and young green lefties that think they're going to be the next, uh, you know, the next sort of uh, green senator for uh, for South Australia, and they they attract a vote. You don't have to bring out many people to to get a to get a win in local government. I'm uh, proof of that, of course, because <laughs> I did it as well. But uh, you know, I well, you got to be. Hey, I love the outsiders. We can't we can't pull anyone's leg in here. Um, but um, but you know, like it, this is a problem. And I keep saying to people, this is not just about you know voting on voting day. This is about getting involved in the political process. You know, like make sure that you're thinking about running for local council if you're sick of councils cancelling cancelling Australia Day make sure that you're voting in your professional bodies uh, polls. I mean, the, the Law Society of South Australia here has 3,000 members. It took a poll on whether or not the Law Society should say yes or no to the voice. A thousand people responded and a bare, mi minor bare majority voted yes. So the Law Society now adopts a position oh, for yes in, yeah. in, in South Australia. That's, that's 501 out of 3,000. That's because Conservatives don't show up and play. It's time to get on with it. It's time to get back in the ring.
James Alex, McPherson. Alex, just one more question on the Australia Day issue. I mean, it's all very well to blame local councils, but doesn't the federal government have some responsibility for this? The Morrison government legislated to ensure local councils could only run citizenship ceremonies on the Australia Day weekend. One of the first things the Albanese government did was to reverse that decision, which is that not tacit sort of encouragement for councils to do the kinds of things that you're talking about? Yeah, look, absolutely. Leading from the front, is it? And, and, you know, Prime Minister Morrison did do a good job on that, I have to say. We really did in terms of fighting back. I think there was some discussion about whether or not councils would retain funding for this, that and the other if they didn't hold citizenship ceremonies on 26 January. Uh, and, look, absolutely right. I mean, really, the Australia Day should be bricked in on January 26, I think. I might be mistaken in saying Henry Pike, uh, the MP up in Queensland there, has had some, some talk about whether or not to... Uh, you know, to legislate on this through a private uh, private members' bill. And, and, and I think it's a great idea. I think it's a very sensible idea. And we know that this is not reflective of the mood in the community. The vast, overwhelming majority of Australians want Australia Day to stay. So why a local government, why is the Albanese government and anyone else that wants to interject on this freelancing on their own personal views against the will of the people? Well, Alex, doesn't this all come down to, I think, what we've seen here in the last year with the Voice campaign is finally unmasking the salami strategy of the left, you know, where they take the whole big yeah. thing that they want to do and they just slice off little bits, bit by bit. Like, oh, well, OK, I guess we don't do Australia Day anymore. Oh, OK, I guess we don't do that anymore. Oh, OK, I guess we pay reparations. Oh, OK, I guess my house isn't mine. And, you know, <laughs> and this is where you wind up with all of these things. Has the voice here, and, and I'm just exaggerating about the house not being yours, don't write in everybody on the press council, but, the, uh, but everybody... Uh, sort of realizes where this is all going with these sort of things. And you only get called a culture warrior when you wind up fighting back. And yet the real warriors, the real revolutionaries, are the ones on the left mm -hmm. who are trying to change the way we operate so that they can be the ones in power. Alex. James, that's the perfect summary. I don't know what I can add to that. You've absolutely nailed it. It is death by a thousand cuts. The salami strategy is spot on. We know how this works. These things start off as, you know, oh, let's talk about recognition in the Constitution. And before you know it, it becomes, you know, an entirely new chapter in the Constitution in line with a UN globalist, uh, you know, undrip agenda. Uh, look, Aussies are not not going to be fooled by this. And I, I had the view 18 months ago that Aussies would work this out, even if the, you know, the government, you know, as they did, well, as this was building, weren't going to tell Aussies the detail, as they haven't. But I always had confidence that Australians would work this out, that, that they would be cautious with their constitution. We've had something like 44 referenda in our history, and only eight have ever got up. So history is against us or against those who, who speak for the S campaign. Obviously, I do not. Um, so, I, look, we really do have to say on this one, uh, the SS Albanese is heading to Davy Jones' locker on the issue of The Voice, and uh, I think Aussies are going to deliver a Brexit moment to the corporate elites and to the smug political operators who think that they can just tell Aussies what to do, because this is divisive, it's the voice of division, and as Senator Jacinta Price always says, um, what Canberra needs are a set of ears, not actually a new voice. Really? Well, let's hope you can talk a little bit of sense to your leader and uh, get rid of this ridiculous notion of having another referendum under a coalition government for recognition. I think, you know, that's going to be done and dusted with this this time around. We don't want to have another divisive debate uh, uh, next term. But on other matters, Maurice Payne is stepping down. Uh, there's a great deal of conjecture about who's going to replace her. She wants another moderate, someone like New South Wales, uh, former, former New South Wales Transport Minister Andrew Constance. Uh, Warren Mundine is another name that's uh, being bandied about. Uh, what do you think should happen to that Senate spot? Because we saw Jim Molan, who was a Conservative warrior, his spot ended up going to some small L Liberal. Uh, are we going to see a factional fight within the Liberal Party um, when it comes to this selection? Well, well, thank you for pulling the pin on a Sunday morning grenade and handing it to me like a <laughs> bunch of flowers, Rita. I appreciate that. Um, it's a lovely, lovely moment for a Saturday, a Sunday morning. I don't even know what day it is. Um, look, I, I don't look. I don't seek to, and I really do mean this. I don't seek to, you know, uh, you know, postulate about what the New South Wales division will do. But uh, there are some great people floating around. I mean, you know, Warren Mundine is one. 
Uh, and I'm just putting names out there. I haven't, you know, sort of spoken to anyone about this. Catherine Deves is another person who I'd love to see uh, enter into the fight in uh, in Canberra. She's a brave woman who, uh, you know, who who has uh, who has a lot to offer as well. And there are many, many others. Uh, Dallas McInerney. There are lots of good people floating around in New South Wales. And I am sure, uh, in order to now go back into my lane, that the uh, pre-selectors of the New South Wales division will do us proud. Well, a lot, of, a lot of great names there, and we'll, and we'll just leave it at that as you sort of sit there with that ticking time bomb there. But in the meantime, I want to ask you one last question as an Adelaidean. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was talk this week, one of the half dozen excuses we could find for Qatar getting knocked back was uh, that they could add, add more mm. flights in Adelaide at the same time they're apparently such a horrible human rights abuser yeah. that they shouldn't be allowed to fly. Did you feel like Adelaide was getting a, a bit of a <laughs> diss there from the Albanese government saying, oh, well, you know, Qatar, they're not good enough for Sydney, yeah. but yeah, let him go off to Adelaide. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. I, I, yeah, yes, no, the Adelaide Airport is great. They do a great job, particularly the great people at security who I'll be seeing later on this afternoon. So be nice to me. Um, I was just on that little free plug. They are. They are. <laughs> is a great airport, and of course, as is Canberra, as is all of the smaller airports that were named. But I mean, this really does highlight the absolute lack of you know, private sector awareness of this government to think that it's sort of all of a sudden uh, commercially viable just to start flying into the smaller airports just because you can. I mean, the whole point of the exercise is that these airlines want to fly into the major airports, you know, the Melbournes and the Sydneys and the, and the Brisbanes and those sorts of things. And so just to dismiss this as, as well, you know, you could fly into Port Lincoln or you could drop a, an <laughs> A380 onto, you know, sort of the tarmac off the uh, Fraser Island or whatever, you know. I mean... This is this whole catastrophe. Look, we, we said ultimately that, that it wasn't going to be easy under Albanese. I don't think any of us understood after the voice, the high power costs uh, and, you know, the high interest rates and now this sort of, you know, higher you know, travel cost. This is going to cost a billion dollars by some uh, projections to the economy generally. I don't think any of us could have understood in truth how, you know, how not easy it was going to be under Albanese. But this is just another another reality check for the Australian people. We need to get a coalition government back into uh, into the lodge. Alex Antic, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us to play with grenades on a Sunday morning.